Kevin Haig. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I attended uh, most days of the hearings of uh, the Royal Commission on the Pipe River uh, coal mine tragedy. Uh, it was unusual, Mr. Speaker, for the commissioners themselves to ask many questions. But one of the ones that, that really sticks in my mind was a question asked by Stuart Bell, one of the commissioners, uh, who is the, in his day job, commissioner for mine safety and health for Queensland. And he asked Doug White, who is uh, one of the managers from Pike River and an extremely experienced coal miner, whether in his experience he had ever encountered a situation um, where the regulator had made no notices to the, to the mining company for any changes or improvements in health and safety. And Doug White answered no. And Commissioner Bell was clearly aghast at the gulf that existed between Queensland mine safety regulations and those that pertained in New Zealand. Mr Speaker, that gulf came from decades of governments that either had actively shrunk the state um, and the role of the state or had not done enough to pull that, pull that role back and reverse, reverse those, those changes. And the two particular axe blows to uh, mine worker safety came in the 1990s at the hands of particularly Bill Birch and Max Bradford um, when they gutted mine safety regulations and then, uh, and then eliminated the role of check inspectors and, and largely dismantled the government's uh, mine inspection service as well. Mr Speaker, I uh, live close to the Pike River coal mine site and um, many of those affected uh, directly um, by the tragedy were my friends and neighbours. Um, and I'm proud of the role that, that I played um, in uh, forcing the government uh, from its initial position of stonewalling and Bart Simpson nothing to see here attitude uh, into instead creating first the high hazard unit and then uh, WorkSafe, overhauling mine safety regulations and then overhauling uh, uh, workplace health and safety legislation. Those have all been uh, good uh, developments. But the question, Mr Speaker, is whether or not enough has been done. Because the, the picture I certainly have is of a government that is very much in two minds. I think Ian Lees Galloway is right that one of those minds was forced by the circumstances that immediately followed the Pike River disaster. Um, I don't believe that any of those changes that the government has made have gone as far as I would take them. Uh, on the, uh, the, the next day, after the publication of the Royal Commission's report, I asked the Prime Minister whether he accepted that deregulation had been a primary cause of the disaster. He did not. He didn't accept it. Uh, and, Mr Speaker, when we considered the first of the government's health and safety bills, we had the quarrying industry submitting that they should be uh, exempted from some of the measures um, that, that pertain to mining and quarrying. And they won, Mr Speaker. The government allowed them to, to be exempted from those provisions with tragic consequences. So, Mr Speaker, I'm certainly reminded of a question that I asked uh, former Minister Kate Wilkinson on a number of occasions. I asked her, sir, whether on the day before the Pike River disaster, she would have said that the government had done all that it could to ensure the safety of miners going to work that day. It was a very difficult question for her to answer, sir, um, because there is always something that we can do. And so what I ask in relation to this bill is what can possibly be wrong without allowing this bill to go forward to a select committee to enable members of the public, mine workers and the companies themselves to tell us whether enough has been done, sir. Because what can be more important for us in this House to ensure that mine workers go to work each day and then come home?